live from Turner Gymnasium. You're watching ODAC women's basketball right here on LHS San. I'm Sam Graham alongside Evan Gates getting ready for this matchup between your Lynchburg Hornets and the Yellow Jackets of Randolph-Macon. We've gotten well into February now, Evan, and you know what that means. Conference tournaments, basketball's heating up all around the country. ODAC, absolutely no different in that regard. And we got a couple battles as you look up and down the standings. Of course, only 10 teams of the 13-team conference actually get into the postseason. So let's take a quick look at, you know, kind of what's going on in the conference. Absolutely. So we knew in the ODAC tournament, the top six teams will get buys in that first round with the seven and eight seed hosting the nine and 10 seed. So as we see it right now, Lynchburg sitting in that nine spot. It looks like they will be playing against Farum. Really the question going to be whose home court is it on? We also see a lot of matchups across the conference today. One in particular will be Roanoke against Bridgewater, which could also impact the higher end of the standings. Yeah, and I mean, for the two teams that we have here today on the Randolph-Macon side of things, you've already clinched that first round bye, but you're still kind of jockeying for seeding a little bit. First place, it's a long shot, but it's still up in the air there. Obviously need a win tonight. And then for Lynchburg, yeah, you're going to be looking at Farum. That's a team that on your own court you came in here and beat. So definitely home, home court advantage is going to be crucial there. But as for our matchup today, let's take a quick peek at the team comparison. And one of the first things, it's not on here, but fast break points. They're hard to come by when you're playing this randolph making team. Doesn't make many errors. Only 16 turnovers a game. That leads the ODAC. But what else jumps off here? Absolutely. And we also want to note the field goal percentage. We see randolph making shooting 39% from the field. Largely credit to Catherine Kagey. She leads the team in field goal percentage just over 50%. And this offense really wants to work around her down low. We've seen it all season long, opening opportunities. And you have to choose if you're going to double her down low because you're leaving the making offense open for three as well. So very versatile offense. And we'll also have to, have to see how Lynchburg responds in this one. Yeah, Kagey has been fantastic this season. That offense is patient and controlled, and that defense only allowed 17 of its 23 opponents to score 60 or more this season. That is going to be a tall task for Lynchburg tonight. We're going to step aside for just a few moments, and when we return, we will have starting lineups and action from tonight's ODAC Women's Basketball Contest. I chose to play softball at the University of Lynchburg because I came to friendlies and camps and the team and the coaches were so welcoming and I just, after that I knew this was the place for me. The University of Lynchburg has helped me achieve goals because through my classes I do group projects and I think that will prepare me for my job when I need to work with people. The person that has the most influence in my life would be my parents because Throughout my softball career, they have done nothing but support me. And when I have bad games, they always pick me up. And they're always the people that I go to for anything because they just know that they're always there for me. I like playing softball at the University of Lynchburg because the girls and the team, they're all super fun to be around and they always welcome you. And they're always there if you need anything. And if you ever have any questions, they're the people that can answer them for you.
Yeah, thanks, man. Emily Brubaker. I am a junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. I am a marketing major with a digital media marketing minor. I chose to come to the University of Lynchburg because first of all the golf program was new and it was starting up so I was really intrigued by that idea and then the class sizes here are also really similar to what I had in high school and that was really good for me because it meant I would have a good relationship with my professor so when I did have to miss for golf the professor knew me and being able to make up the work would be easier than if I went to a bigger school. What I like about the campus is walking around, everyone's just friendly in general. Because first of all, it's a beautiful campus, but everyone around here is smiling and they're having fun. And it just has a really homey feel that is something that I really enjoy. What I liked about the athletic department here is the facilities are really nice. We have an indoor facility that is designated for us. And then what something else that I really enjoyed is the coaches and the athletic directors are very involved in players' school and just golf in general. So it's nice knowing that you have a community around you to help you if you need help. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. You have, you have a great look. Let me just tell you that. I know you don't know me yet, but I want to work with you. I'll get a picture real quick. Thanks, man. Well, as promised, welcome back inside Turner Gymnasium. Starting lineups being announced down on the floor. We'll run through them for you up top. 
here as well. Pretty much business as usual on the Lynchburg side of things. And Randolph Megan, for the most part, as well, they do uh, kind of rotate a few of those ladies uh, through the starting five. But first off, for Randolph Megan, the guard, of course, going to be shared in half field. She will run the point as she always does. Then the wings will be Conrad, Catherine Kagey, and Jane Elkins. And then Juliana Park, 39 three pointers made on the year. She'll round it out as the big down low and on the Lynchburg side of things same lineup we've seen for the most part as of late Olivia Harris did not start against Shenandoah she's back into the starting uh, role today uh, she'll be joined in the backcourt by Macy Mullins and Maddie Nimmo and then Bree Spainauer and Darcy Ross will hold down the fort down low and they will certainly be tested yet again today it seems like nearly every time that we broadcast the game here at home for Lynchburg there's another you know dominant ODAC big that's ready to give them some trouble down low and Catherine Kagey only player in the conference averaging 15 or more points nine or more rebounds she will do just that today the Lynchburg will control the opening tip Spain hour wins it and Lynchburg sets up on offense and for Randolph Macon, just a very disciplined team, both offensively and defensively. Touch on Catherine Kagey as Olivia Harris doesn't get it to go. Three, three player of the week nominations this week, this year, pardon, in the ODAC. And we have just seen her presence throughout the season for the Yellow Jackets. So we'll see what she can do today. ODAC Women's Basketball Player of the Year candidacy heating up here down the stretch. We'll get into that a little bit later, but now Macon setting up for its first offensive possession, and that will result in the 40th made triple of the year from Juliana Park. Leads the team in that department, does a good job spacing the floor. She stands five foot 10, calmly knocks down the triple there. We touch on it every game for Lynchburg, the three-point battle always going to be interesting. And we see Randolph making a team that might not make the three as much shooting just 27.9% from three, but they have the players to really get those opportunities, and if they can use it today, very big for the Yellow Jackets. Turnover by Nemo, making in transition, and once again, it is Park, this time finishing down low, flashing her acumen from all around the floor in the early going of this one. Turnovers, that's going to be a big point of emphasis for Coach Nichols. I mean, it is pretty much every game, and any winning formula generally requires cutting down on turnovers. Every coach wants to do that. But Nemo, you know, it just comes with handling the ball so much, but she does average about four a game. So certainly on a personal level, I'm sure she'd like to cut down on that a bit as well. Sam, we touched on it in the first matchup. Randolph Macon led Lynchburg 19-6 to and points off turnovers. And just being able to get into transition always going to be a key point for this offense as a very quick start for the Yellow Jackets. 7-0 Randolph making lead. Kagey on that last possession coming down with the ball in prime position. There's Nimmo with an answer on the other side. First two points on the board for Lynchburg. And Maddie Nimmo scored in double figures in three straight, averaging right around 12 points a game now. Just gotten better as the year's gone along. Game high 17 against Shenandoah over the weekend. Sadly came in a loss for the Lynchburg Hornets. And as we see, when you shoot the three ball as well as Lynchburg has this season, it's going to open up chances to drive. And I think throughout this matchup, it's going to be very key for the Hornets to try and get to the bucket. We see they like to spread the floor, making playing a tight man defense. But if they can just set a few screens up high and really get those cuts that they're looking for, they're going to be able to expose this defense. As we see there, nice look from Casey Kelly. Casey Kelly checks into the game, immediately makes an impact, gets into the middle of that randolph making defense. If you can get it to the middle, there's a whole, you know, a whole lot of options get opened up on the offensive side of things. Now here's a trap down low. Third defender is the baseline, but randolph making passes out of it. Here's a second shot up and good in the lane. Foul called. Looks like they will count the bucket. No. That's going to be an offensive foul. So we should believe have those points wiped off. They'll stay on for now. So I guess that foul came after the made basket. So Kagey will sit at four and two buckets 
inside the lane. That's something that Coach Nichols emphasized heavily. She wants to avoid today, wants to turn not only Kagey, but this whole Randolph-Macon team into jump shooters as much as possible. Well, this is an offense that likes to work down low around Kagey and be able to spread the ball. And as we see there, just being able to get into the lane and get that three, that's really how this offense likes to function, and they have been very productive with it throughout the season. Well, that's two threes already in this young game. Less than four minutes gone by, and quickly turnover number two against Maddie Nemo and Lynchburg. Both of those threes credited to Park. That one coming from the corner, so she is heating up early on. It's got Randolph making out to an early eight-point lead at 12-4. As we touched on Park, eight early points and really just scoring coming from all different players on this roster. As we see Hatfield get a three. And so far, just lights out against the Hornets. Not much you can do when they're shooting the ball like that. Randolph making offense, firing on all cylinders, and that's certainly problematic for this Lynchburg staff. We mentioned in the pregame, only six of their 23 opponents have been able to eclipse 60 points this season. And they really just have had a lot of luck when they win. They're not scoring as much, but they're not allowing their opponents to score very much as well. And that is the key stat as we look coming into this game. Randolph-Macon, they allow their opponent just 51 points compared to Lynchburg 66, and really just lockdown defense has gotten them there. And it looks like Olivia Harris took a few extra steps. And yeah, to that last point, though, that you're making, as we, I mean, this will go down as another defensive stop for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, it's 51 on the season. If you just take, well, it's not really a small sample size, but the last 20 games, that number goes down to 48. A little bit of a slow start for Randolph-Macon. Dropped their first three in a row, but since then they've really gotten things going 17 and three in those last 20 contests. And very capable of shaking up this ODAC tournament as they sit in second right now. You know, the Yellow Jackets, when tournament time comes, it's anybody's game and they've played as well as anyone else in the ODAC. So we've really just seen, as I touched on, lots of discipline as maybe jinxed them there, backcourt violation, but they really just have been firing on all cylinders. So Lynchburg, an opportunity here coming off of a Randolph-Macon turnover. Again, Yellow Jackets best in the conference when it comes to prizing possessions, holding on to the ball. Get a kickball violation going against Hatfield there. And while Vandergrift has checked in a few possessions ago for Lynchburg. And early on in this one, we haven't really seen a lot of three-point opportunities for Lynchburg. See them spreading the floor, see a few cuts there. Macy Mullins just can't connect. But as we've touched on, if you're not getting those three looks, have to be able to drive and shake up this defense. Mullins, who sits just five triples away from, well, she'd be the third athlete to tie the school record here at Lynchburg. Three-pointers made in a season. That number is 50. That would have been number 46, goes in and out, and then a jump ball turns possession back over to Randolph-Macon. They'll work it around this Lynchburg defense. Kelly getting in the passing lane, deflecting that one out of bounds. We'll get a couple substitutions here for Randolph-Macon. We'll run through those with you when we come back from this first media timeout. All Yellow Jackets early on, and more specifically, all Juliana Park. She's got eight of Randolph-Macon's first 15. You're watching ODAC Women's Basketball right here on LHSN.
Welcome back inside Turner Gymnasium. 446 to go in the first quarter of action. Mentioned a few moments ago, Macy Mullins. We could potentially see her tie or maybe even break that single season school record. We know she can make five or six threes in a game. That's not out of the question. But speaking of 50, also just had the 50th career game coached by Lynchburg women's coach Allison Nichols over the weekend against Shenandoah. This will be number 51. So 50 in the air a bit here. And also we have, it's a very good number because I'd like to say a very warm, happy 50th birthday to my mother back home in Roanoke, Wendy Gates. Not only an outstanding parent, but an outstanding human being as well. So happy birthday, Mom. But great day for 50 today. Back on the floor, Randolph making a couple bites at the apple nearly on this possession. Not a fantastic offensive rebounding team on the whole this season, but as of late, and especially in spurts, been able to prolong some possessions. Done, done a very good job down low, just you know, keeping the ball alive, giving themselves multiple opportunities. Absolutely, and all you can ask for if you're Coach Burke is to have patient possessions and it's not turning the ball over. We've seen Macon do both of those early on, but that's really a stat that could control this ball game as we go forward. Meanwhile, it's one and done there for Lynchburg. Shot missed by Casey Kelly. See lots of cutting. And though she's not on the floor right now, if Kegi is on the floor, she is extremely good when she can ice her down low. Good look from the mid-range. Kayla Terry, give it to her. Lynchburg cuts this deficit back under 10. And coming out of the media timeout, quick 2-0. Lynchburg advantage. Now quickly trying to respond is Randolph Macon. And respond they will. That's double figures already for Juliana Park. We've seen her do it down low off the offensive rebound, a couple of triples, stepping outside, extending a range. And that time, pulling up in the mid range. Good look at it. And she buries it. Defense does not collapse in time. And she's just looked comfortable early on as Lynchburg, as we've said, lots of threats on this Randolph Macon team. And Park just taking advantage of opportunities she's been given. So we'll get a foul off the ball there. It's going to go against Marissa Ziegler, working against Bree Spainauer, I believe. So that'll trigger an inbound opportunity for Lynchburg. Nemo, the inbounder, as usual. A look to work it into Terry, gets it cleanly. Nowhere to go with it. Ball swings around, Spain hour up high. Now Nemo, just seven remaining on the shot clock. Lynchburg's gotta look to get something done. Nemo looked like she was going for the reverse. Loses her handle, now a deep three. Olivia Harris, got it! Lynchburg on the board with a triple. Took a little bit longer than usual. At least in these past couple games, Olivia Harris takes the lid off the basket from deep. And many ways to score it, but it doesn't matter. That's a three either way. And as we've seen down low, Sledge just was unable to get the ball on the post as Randolph Macon has done a great job defensively of really limiting Lynchburg and the size that they have. Taylor Gant has checked in for the Hornets and we'll get Another turnover going against Randolph Macon. That's their third early on, so knotted up here in the turnover battle, granted less than eight minutes into this game. But now Lynchburg, 2.17 remaining. They've got an opportunity to do something they did not do in the entirety of these two teams' first game, and that is score more than 10 points in a quarter. In fact, those, these two teams combined for a total of 10 in the fourth quarter. Lynchburg did claim the advantage there, one six to four, but it was really that third quarter that separated Randolph Macon. They put up 23, give themselves a separation that would ultimately put that one to bed. And if you're a Hornets fan, you're really hoping for a different ball game than that one early in the season. And two teams that have really grown into their mold as we touch on almost every game, just an extremely young squad for Lynchburg. And with every game is going to come more confidence and more discipline. But Randolph Macon really just sharpening the tools in their shed as Odak play continues. 
Sledge pulls up mid-range. Good look at it. Tried to use the bank. It was unkind. Now the ball will turn back over to Randolph-Macon. It's going to be a foul assessed to Sledge. Looking for grabbing her own offensive rebound. Unable to do so, at least not without a little bit of contact. It's Randolph-Macon. A couple opportunities for Lynchburg there, but ends with a goose egg in the scoring column. Reverse layup. That's a tough shot down low for Jane Elkins. 6'1 freshman. Be one of the tallest players on the floor tonight. Only Paige Anderson and Olivia Murray taller for Randolph-Macon. Lynchburg, it's just Sarah Johnson over six foot. There's and another Lynchburg turnover, Macy Mullins. With the style of play for Randolph-Macon, it's almost deceptive because they like to play down low. They like to slow down possessions and really get those good looks. And so despite necess not necessarily having that size, they really can maximize the points they get as Olivia Harris will get the ball back for Lynchburg. Ball swung to the corner. That was another good look from three as Conrad was looking to make it four in the first period. Lynchburg still just sitting with the desperation deep triple from Olivia Harris. Now 43 seconds and ticking in this first quarter. Lynchburg undoubtedly looking for a stop and a quality possession. Try and break that double figure threshold. That will go a long way in assisting. So we'll get an offensive foul going against Jane Elkins. And the Hornets just in the right spot at the right time. And this first quarter, as we see, that's the second. Just something that I'm sure Coach Nichols has really been able to hammer down throughout the season, just Talk defensively. Yeah, talked about the size early on today. That's something that Lynchburg can struggle with. They just don't have as much size as a lot of, you know, a lot of teams in the conference. Randolph Macon certainly has the advantage today. So Elkins taking a seat on the bench early on with two fouls. Certainly a welcome sight. But now Lynchburg back on offense looking to create something. Instead, it was momentarily a turnover. Late whistle blown will be a foul against the Yellow Jackets. Nemo trying to cut inside. It's going to go against KG. That'll be her first. Took a brief spell on the bench after... Picking up a quick four. Meanwhile, Nemo at the line. Lynchburg already in the bonus. And Nemo these last few games has been crucial in the starting lineup for Lynchburg, as we see at this point in the season. Leading the team in points, assists, and steals per game. She's all over the court. Team's best free throw shooter per the ODAC leaderboards. A few that rank ahead of her just haven't taken enough opportunities. There's a great cut from Kagi. It's a big part of her game. Gets her own offensive rebound. Puts it back up and scores. Plus the foul, Catherine Kagi going to the line and looking for one more. Great job for the Yellow Jackets. Just not giving up on that play. So we've touched on an extremely good rebounding team as they're good for second in the conference and the team standings. And Kagi takes advantage. That will, of course, send Kegi to the line. That's one of the few weaknesses for this Randolph-Macon team. 13th in the conference. Meanwhile, Nat, Maddie Nemo gets in close, gets to the bucket where she can be so deadly and scores as time expires on this first quarter. Nemo giving a little momentum to the Hornets as we've hit the first quarter break. We'll take it with our men. Have the second quarter for you in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. You're watching LHSN.
Second quarter getting set to get going. Take a look at Lynchburg's band. Adding to the excitement of a late season February basketball game here in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Things heating up, not only on the court, outside as well. Beautiful, felt like spring day out there today. Temperatures climbing into the high 60s here in the Hill City. That's a nice surprise as well. On the court, Lynchburg, 13 points in that first quarter, thanks in large part to number 13 in white. Nemo scoring six points after the media timeout. Here's a closeout on a three, Nemo and Kelly able to alter it. Rebound ends up with Mullins and another foul issued against Randolph Macon. The Yellow Jackets have a little bit of trouble when it comes to getting into foul trouble. That's gonna be number two on Catherine Kagey. Elkins already on the bench with two. So a couple of Randolph Macon bigs getting a little foul trouble early. And something in the last few big games for Lynchburg, we haven't really seen a lot of foul trouble from either team and so Definitely a welcome sight if you're a Hornet fan. That's going to be a foul off the ball. Looked at first as though they were pointing to Kagi and said it will go against Devin Conrad. 5'7", senior out of Parksville, Maryland. And if you're the Hornets coming out of that break, you really have to set the tone early because we saw what the Yellow Jackets did to open this ball game. I believe 7-0 run and Obviously, you don't want to fall back too much on your shooting, but you also want to set the intensity. It's a 7-0 start to the game for Randolph Macon. Juliana Park making two threes before we hit the media timeout. Maddie Nimmo giving a little bit of the momentum to Lynchburg before the break, but it's still an eight-point yellow jacket lead. Here's a reset for Lynchburg. Working around the perimeter, no need to be in a hurry now. Down low to Ross. Inside out game for Lynchburg, looking for space, couldn't quite find it, but Olivia Harris does not need much. She's got her second triple early in the second quarter, and the deficit is just five. As we've seen, three guards for Lynchburg and Nemo, Mullins, and Harris, all three who can shoot the basketball, and just extremely good work there, being able to space the floor and really be patient to get that good shot. Open three from Morgan Miller, no good. Mullins, known for her three-point shooting, goes inside, draws the foul. The foul's really starting to pile up now for Randolph Macon as Elkins on the bench with two, Kagey on the bench with two. That one gonna be issued to Paige Anderson. So that's another big for this Randolph Macon team. Make no mistake, Lynchburg going right at these bigs early and often, looking to push the ball inside. And that absolutely has to be part of the game plan. As we've touched on, really just getting to the bucket and forcing the Yellow Jackets to make a decision on defense. And great job there by Macy Mullins to get to the line. Mullins good on both, 83.9% from the line on the season. That unofficially is the top mark on the team. Just not enough attempts. So a little bit of pressure in the half court there from Lynchburg. Not something that they tend to use very often, but as we've touched on, just trying to set the pace of this one, force the Yellow Jackets to have a quicker possession. Dangerous skip pass to the far side. Work the ball all the way back around. It eventually falls into the hands of Devin Conrad for her first three of the game. Meanwhile, Maddie Nemo, head full of steam, gets to the basket again just Unable to convert in close. Good defense there from Randolph Macon. Sheridan Hatfield doing an excellent job of just slowing the pace down as we see very often lots of cuts for this Randolph Macon team to the high post where they can do that and get the drive. There's another cut setting up a shot down low. It's going to be Morgan Miller. Missed that three a moment ago. Cashes in. Close to the basket on that possession. Let's lead back up to seven. Here's a rare three-point attempt from Spain Hour. It's a little bit of a roll reversal there. Olivia Harris battling for the offensive rebound off a of Spain Hour three-point attempt. Foul will go against Randolph Macon. 
We get some substitutions. It's Mullins, Casey Kelly. We'll hit the bench for Lynchburg. Brooke Kaysen checks in, as does Kayla Sledge. That's going to be a costly, unforced, well, now a forced turnover, five-second call going against Nemo. Normally very good as the Hornet inbounder, just better defense from Randolph making there. That's probably going to be a theme as we go all the way through this game. Lynchburg's found a few holes, but by and large, Randolph making defense living up to its billing. Here's a big size mismatch. Nemo guarding the six foot two Anderson. Ball goes to the corner, looking for the pump fake. Instead, officials say that's gonna be a walk against Miller, who likes to operate out of those corners. We've seen it near and far side. That time, just got going before the ball did. Randolph making a team that loves to get the ball into the paint or at the high post and dish it to the corners as we've seen many games this year. Despite the percentage, they are an extremely big threat from three-point range if you can get as open as they have been in some of these matchups. Against any team, really, you can't leave them that open. Nemo forcing her second kicked ball violation of the game, this time against Sheridan Hatfield. Earns a reset for Lynchburg from the sideline. An off ball screen looking to free up Nemo. It's going to get her a lane right to the basket. Scores plus the foul. Fouls piling up for Randolph Macon. And meanwhile, Lynchburg can cut this deficit to four with a Maddie Nemo free throw. And that just comes with the territory for Randolph Macon having to guard Lynchburg as tight as you have, especially with the three point threat. Also, have to be able to get back. And Maddie Nemo just makes them pay. Some of the biggest keys to pulling an upset, obviously shooting a high percentage, but then limiting turnovers or at least winning the turnover battle and making your free throws. Lynchburg five of five at the charity stripe and tied five turnovers apiece with Randolph Macon. And that's a team you do not mind being tied with. Lynchburg comes in today, nearly 21 turnovers a game to Macon 16. And if you're Coach Nichols, you have to like what you've seen early on, just lots of intensity especially on defense as we see as we saw there for the Hornets just being able to get to the spot Nemo once again looks to go inside winds up kicking it out eventually possession will expire with Kayla Sledge walk we see Kagi back in the ball game for the Yellow Jackets if you're the Hornets in these next few minutes really want to be able to try and take the ball at her on offense as she's been such a large part of the Yellow Jackets' success in the last few months. Randolph Macon sees the lead, cut down to four, feel like they need some instant offense in the form of Katherine Kagey, and she delivers a mid-range jumper made immediately. That's what Coach Allison Nichols said she wanted to force Kagey to do. You know, don't give her anything too easy down low. Make her be a jump shooter, but she can make those as well. And, Proves it there. Both teams proving they're very capable of scoring in many ways. So there's a foul against Lynchburg, I believe on Bree Spainauer, trying to poke the ball away. It'll be her first of the game. Get a few more substitutions. Vandergrift and Mullins checking in for Lynchburg. Juliana Park, an early 10 points. Checking back in for Randolph Macon. Here's a good look at a three. Double screen on the perimeter. Unable to cash in is Marissa Ziegler. And Nemo again, you see, we saw this after a missed three earlier from Randolph Macon. Maddie Nemo, full head of steam. It's hard to create transition opportunities. Lynchburg only had two points in fast breaks when these two teams last met. So Nemo trying to create a little bit there. If nothing else, able to draw the foul. Absolutely, and as you touched on, the Hornets do not want another version of that last game. And so even if you're not getting in the fast break, just being able to be efficient 
down the court and at least make this Yellow Jackets defense think a little bit. But from a stats standpoint, at this point in the game, you have to be happy if you're Coach Nichols. So Nimmo goes inside again, draws the foul. It's now seven of 10 Randolph Macon players that have suited up today own at least one foul. Elkins, Ziegler, and Anderson all have two. And I believe our board shows Kagey with two fouls. Box score shows her with one. We're gonna go off the board though, and that should be four players for Randolph Macon with two in the early going. And large part due to the Hornets' energy that they brought as we see a three there in the corner from Marissa Ziegler. Mullins, catch, shoot, make. Her first three of the game and now just four away from that record. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast also answers that Ziegler three. Immediately, ball swings down low into the danger zone of sorts. Catherine Kagey, that's just too close to the basket for one of the best post players. If we even want to limit her to that label in the conference. And you have Here's, to think, if she gets the ball in the paint, there's a very high percentage chance of her capitalizing. But Lynchburg going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the last few minutes. Speaking of high percentage, there's a great look from Lynchburg. Macy Mullins in close, awaiting the media timeout, another three from Ziegler. That's the fifth for Randolph Macon of this first half to three for Lynchburg. We saw this when Roanoke came to town in the early going. Roanoke putting a lot of pressure on the Hornets from the three-point line. That's not something we expected. You can say the same about Randolph Macon. And the threes falling in waves. That one bouncing all around before dropping in for Brooke Kaysen, another very capable perimeter score for this Lynchburg team. Well, for Randolph Macon, we've touched on it already, but they love to use the corners, and we saw Ziegler in almost the identical spot for two possessions, just being able to skip the ball. Two teams going blow for blow here. So we still yet to get the media timeout, should get it following that jump ball, and we will. Action picking up quickly down here on the floor, threes, Falling in waves, back and forth contest between the Yellow Jackets and the Hornets. 3.16 to go, first half. We'll take a quick break and return for the remainder of the first half on LHSN. Well, we mentioned top of the broadcast, this Randolph making offense easily summarized loosely by patient, controlled, efficient. And they've got 11 assists in the early going on 15 made field goals here through roughly the first 16, 17 minutes of action. However, they have also picked up 10 fouls, just four for Lynchburg. That certainly advantage goes to the Hornets. So they're fifth in the conference from the free throw line. Randolph making not so much, get an offensive foul, go a little ways to evening up our disparity. Fifth team against Lynchburg. Well, as we mentioned, as we've seen Randolph Macon's offense really patient, but Lynchburg also shooting 40% from three point range, just 7% in that last matchup with the Yellow Jackets early on. So 
we've seen a lot of improvement and especially just getting around the floor and making those passes. Point is doing an excellent job early on. Patient possession there from the Yellow Jackets results in a great look from deep. Sheridan Hatfield tosses her name into the Randolph Macon scoring hat. Open look there. Now fast break opportunity, three on two. Kagey orchestrating pass a little bit behind Morgan Miller. Randolph Macon will have to slow down into the half court. We talked about that 60 point number. Lynchburg up to 31 with two minutes to go in the first half. So on pace to eclipse that. That is certainly step one when it comes to upsetting this Randolph Macon team. But you got to pick things up a little bit on the defensive end as well. Trailing by eight. That's another bucket for Juliana Park. Certainly. And as we've touched on, Randolph Macon in the post just. When they get those isolated chances, they do very good at taking advantage, but nice look of their own for Lynchburg. Spainauer working against Park, wins that matchup. Cross court pass again, swings to Hatfield. Nowhere to go with it. Tried to force the trap, did Olivia Harris against Kagey. Drives inside, looks for the basket instead will be a foul going against the Yellow Jackets. Get Kayla Terry checking back in for Lynchburg as well as Maddie Nemo. Taylor Gant will hit the bench. Gant leading the Hornets assist to turnover ratio. And for the Hornets on defense as we saw that last possession you really have to make a decision if you're going to double Kagey because just leaving other shooters open in that situation, you're very vulnerable to having those opportunities. And as we saw there, even with the double, Kagey's still able to get through. That was the first miss of the game from the free throw line for Lynchburg. Although Mullins does make the second, so it's eight of nine for Lynchburg. Comes to the easy ones and a pair of freshmen in Mullins and Maddie Nemo leading the way 19 of Lynchburg's 34. The Hornets continuing that pressure and we haven't seen a lot of turnovers off of it, but still just being able to maybe frustrate this make an offense a little bit. Some of the idea behind that press just mounts up the pressure throughout the game. Like you said, not quite effective on that one. Another open look from deep as Morgan Miller notches another one. And this last minute, you really have to take advantage and stay close in this ball game. We saw the Hornets claw their way back. You don't want to lose it in the last 60 seconds. Things coming easily on the offensive side of things, although that possession halted by another Lynchburg walk going against Kayla Terry. It's been the defensive end that will certainly be the focus of conversation during the halftime break from Coach Nichols and her staff. You've allowed 42 points to the Yellow Jackets in these first two quarters. And as we've touched on really all game, it's been a lot about pace, but Randolph Macon averaging just 58 a game. So to see them have 42 at the half might be a little bit concerning if you're Coach Nichols. Lynchburg got the stop they wanted. Nemo got herself to the basket, unable to score. 10 seconds to go, first half. There's another triple from Randolph Macon, three seconds. Nemo looks to get a shot off, does before the horn, hits the shot clock, does not draw the backboard, does not draw the net. So it's gonna be a 10 point Randolph Macon lead. Correction, that last three is gonna go down as a two for the Yellow Jackets. And that will be our score, 44 to 34. We've hit the halftime break on Lakeside Drive. We will step aside for just a moment, bring you right back here, discuss what went right, what went wrong, everything about that first half of action. Don't go anywhere, you're watching LHSN.
Thomas Gibson Hobbs graduated from Virginia Christian College in 1904 as a member of its first graduating class. After earning a law degree from the University of Virginia, he settled in Lynchburg and began a highly successful career as an attorney. In January of 1915, he was invited to attend a meeting of the College Board of Trustees, during which the possibility of closing the college due to financial concerns was to be considered. Mr. Hobbs spoke eloquently of the need to fight for the college's existence, and the board decided to continue operating the institution. He was asked to serve on the board at that meeting and served as the chairman of the Board of Trustees from 1918 until his tragic death in 1942. Mr. Hobbs was a guiding light as the college changed its name to Lynchburg College and moved toward becoming an accredited liberal arts institution. His relationships with the economic power structure of the city played a critical role as the young college struggled financially through the depths of the Great Depression. His belief in Josephus Hopwood's vision of the college never wavered, as reflected in his message to the student body in the late 1930s. Lynchburg College, with continued wise leadership, is just on the threshold of development into an institution which will, in still larger measure, build sound leadership in church and school and state, a leadership which will look for its reward in the consciousness of service rendered and a task well done. Upon his death in 1942, the Board of Trustees unanimously adopted a resolution of appreciation which named Mr. Hobbs as, quote, the college's greatest leader, unquote. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. My name is Emily Brubaker. I am a junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. I am a marketing major with a digital media marketing minor. I chose to come to the University of Lynchburg because first of all, the golf program was new and it was starting up, so I was really intrigued by that idea. And then the class sizes here are also really similar to what I had in high school. And that was really good for me because it meant I would have a good relationship with my professor. So when I did have to miss for golf, the professor knew me and being able to make up the work would be easier than if I went to a bigger school. What I like about the campus is walking around, everyone's just friendly in general. First of all, it's a beautiful campus, but everyone around here is smiling and they're having fun. And it just has a really homey feel that is something that I really enjoy. 
What I liked about the athletic department here is the facilities are really nice. We have an indoor facility that is designated for us. And then what something else that I really enjoyed is the coaches and the athletic directors are very involved in players school and just golf in general. So it's nice knowing that you have a community around you to help you if you need help. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. After 20 minutes, it's Lynchburg trailing for the eighth straight game at the halftime break. Worth noting, Hornets only two and five in those past seven games, and that is due in large part to how Randolph Macon is shooting it from beyond the arc. They've had four straight games shooting it under 25%, and when these two teams met the first time, they only made five. They've got six in the first half, shot 46% from deep as well. Absolutely, and you see the last two stats on your screen, rebounds and turnovers, really a difference maker in this first half. Lynchburg typically negative four in the rebound margin. They are hanging right with the Yellow Jackets, but turnovers, they were knotted up at five coming out of the last break, and those four turnovers just really crucial moments that the Yellow Jackets were able to take advantage of. Yeah, and Randolph Macon, I mean, we've talked a lot about their defense in the first half, and that's all, of course, well-earned, fantastic defense for the Yellow Jackets, but they've also scored 44 in that first half. They've won 10 games scoring less than 60. Doesn't look like that's going to be needed in the second half uh, here today. Also mentioned earlier in the broadcast, 23 point third quarter, first time these two teams met. So it'll be really interesting to see what Randolph Macon comes out with to start the second half. Absolutely. And just setting the tone from the start. It's been a pace battle the entire way, but really the Yellow Jackets just the better team in controlling possessions and getting the open looks, being able to create those threes. Yeah, and of course the fouls not showing up on your screen there, but that heavily going uh, the direction of or in favor of Lynchburg, I should say, leading the foul disparity 5 to 11. Juliana Park and Katherine Kagey leading the way for Randolph Macon, the two of them in double figures, Matty Nimmo with 11 on the other side for the Hornets. We're just about four and a half minutes away from the start of the second half. We're gonna take a break, but on our way out, I want you to take a look at some of the renovations going on down on Moonfield and Lynchburg softball.
Thomas Gibson Hobbs graduated from Virginia Christian College in 1904 as a member of its first graduating class. After earning a law degree from the University of Virginia, he settled in Lynchburg and began a highly successful career as an attorney. In January of 1915, he was invited to attend a meeting of the College Board of Trustees, during which the possibility of closing the college due to financial concerns was to be considered. Mr. Hobbs spoke eloquently of the need to fight for the college's existence, and the board decided to continue operating the institution. He was asked to serve on the board at that meeting and served as the chairman of the Board of Trustees from 1918 until his tragic death in 1942. Mr. Hobbs was a guiding light as the college changed its name to Lynchburg College and moved toward becoming an accredited liberal arts institution. His relationships with the economic power structure of the city played a critical role as the young college struggled financially through the depths of the Great Depression. His belief in Josephus Hopwood's vision of the college never wavered as reflected in his message to the student body in the late 1930s. Lynchburg College, with continued wise leadership, is just on the threshold of development into an institution which will, in still larger measure, build sound leadership in church and school and state, a leadership which will look for its reward in the consciousness of service rendered and a task well done. Upon his death in 1942, the Board of Trustees unanimously adopted a resolution of appreciation which named Mr. Hobbs as, quote, the college's greatest leader, unquote. Coaches sharing their last words of wisdom ahead of this second half between the Yellow Jackets and the Hornets. Take a look there at head coach of Randolph making Lindsey Burke in her third season at the helm of the program. 41 and 13 overall record in those three seasons. Of course, shortened first year with the team. Just four games. Season was cut short by COVID-19 on February 2nd. That was a tough season for programs all across the country. And last year, Odak runners up, falling to Shenandoah in the title game, and she's got Randolph Macon right in the hunt for an Odak title again here in year three. Absolutely, and also an assistant at the University of Rochester for three years. Shout out to our director of digital media, Tim Laduca. We thank him and our entire staff for all the work that they do. But as you said, Coach Burke, just a phenomenal resume as she started here at Randolph Macon. She's going to be happy with that look that Catherine Kagey gets to open things up here. Kagey now tied for the team lead with 12 points, is still sitting on two fouls. So don't be surprised if Lynchburg looks to go at her in the early going of this third period. As you just touched on, we see Macy Mullins trying to get downhill and get to the basket. And regardless of whether they scored or not in the first half, they really had success in drawing fouls in the paint and that's something that you have to be conscious of if you're Randolph Macon and maybe even just having a little bit of nerves there if Lynchburg can continue doing what they're doing might find success later on. Lynchburg this time saw that five second call earlier got it in with relative ease here decent look at it there by Spain our better defense down low from Park who really got the offense going for the Yellow Jackets in the first half. Had an open look from deep there for a second. Passes out of it. Size advantage as she is faced up by Nemo, right wing. Instead, here's a three from Hatfield. Second chance opportunity. Battle for the rebound. Corralled eventually by Spainauer. Lynchburg looking to go up tempo. And Lynchburg in the first half. Offense going on all cylinders, but it's really going to be the defense that if you want to be in this ball game, you really have to improve. Nemo goes inside, picks up her 12th and 13th points. So 2-2 two, two score early in the third quarter here and two straight trips into the paint for Lynchburg. Once There's again, a the corner. corner three there from Park. Third of the game. She is really heated up here on the road at Lynchburg. And if there is such a thing as a classic statement look for this Randolph-Macon team, it has been getting it to the middle and dishing to that corner. We've seen it a few times today. You pair that with a couple of quality cuts and you've got your Randolph making offense for the most part. Nearly a turnover there. So Ross was trying to feed up high 
to Spainauer. Has to run down and get it. Now goes in close. Foul called on the floor prior to that Spainauer jumper. Looks like Hatfield gets called for that one. Another possession just trying to go straight to the rack. And perhaps if Winchburg can keep doing that, maybe that will open a few three opportunities. So Hatfield will be fifth yellow jacket with multiple fouls now. Not huge need to worry. Just two now into the third quarter, but certainly something to watch for. Correction, of course, Spain Hour at the line. That last call is a shooting foul. Spain Hour goes one of two at the line, including just the second miss of the game from Lynchburg, who has now gotten to the line 11 times. They'll look to probe inside throughout the remainder of the second half. Continue to put pressure on Randolph Macon. Randolph Macon yet to make a free throw in this one. They have just one attempt, but they've really just been efficient with being able to get the looks from beyond the arc. Mullins pokes that one away, looks to go up tempo again, gets in close, good block down low by Miller. Mullins corrals it, reset for Lynchburg. We see down low Casey Kelly trying to find some space. Macon just not allowing it. They've done a great job of commanding the paint. Nemo pulls up, rare three, a little too strong. Lynchburg wanted it to remain on the left side of the court. Officials say otherwise. So two cracks at it there, but no points for Lynchburg as Randolph Macon, 4-2 advantage, excuse me, a 5-3 advantage in this third quarter, pushed the lead out to 12. And Kagey. Another opportunity. Casey Kelly doing a nice job of trying to keep her contested, but still Randolph making able to find a way to score it. Three from Hatfield, second of the day for her, and it pushes the Randolph making lead to the largest it has been this evening. Casey Kelly will draw another foul, send her to the line. Now about three and a half minutes gone by in this third period. Randolph Macon trying to apply the pressure to Lynchburg. Kelly is good on the first. Shooting about 58% on the year from the line. Averaging about five points a game. Freshman wing out of Woodbridge, Virginia. These next few possessions, it's really going to be crucial just to be able to stay tight on this offense because it feels like, as you see, there's the turnover, but Macon's really not been too pressured in the passing lanes. Kaysen, good look at a three. Lynchburg would have loved to have had that one. Would have cut the deficit back down to 10 and set a quick offensive trip. Lynchburg forcing a couple of steals, turning over the Yellow Jackets here. Lynchburg themselves picked up a quick four all in about the last three minutes of the second quarter. But the first two of the third going to Macon. Nemo is trying to force a third one there. Can't track it down before hits the scores table, rolls out of bounds. And we've touched on the last matchup with Randolph Macon earlier in the season. Nemo the only player in double figures that game as we've seen just throughout the season, continuing to contribute. So here we'll get a foul going against Lynchburg. And in that first meeting, several Lynchburg players did not see, notably Macy Mullins. Only 10 Hornets suited up for that one. And that's something when I spoke with Coach Nichols about fast break points earlier today, she was sure to mention it was hard at times to keep fresh legs to apply consistent pressure on Randolph Macon in that first meeting. Mullins looking at her second three of the game and she hits it. Much needed offensive possession there from Lynchburg and Mullins edges a little bit closer to that record. I spoke with her about it pregame. You know, it's something of course, as most players will do, deflected it a little bit, you know, put a lot of the attention on 
what her teammates have done this season as well. But, you know, even going past the three-point shooting, Macy Mullins leads this very young Lynchburg team in minutes, and it's not that surprising to have a freshman do that, especially when you have one of the few, you know, elder statesmen on this team in Sammy Seaver that we've only seen here bits and pieces as she recovers from that injury she suffered in December of last season. But Mullins credited a lot of her three-point shooting you know, to her family. I kind of asked her, you know, just joking around, is it is it genetics? Is it just a lot of time spent in the gym? You know, what is it? And she said, you know, just working out a lot with her sister is really where she, you know, got comfortable with her stroke and then credited her form to her father as well. So family ties strengthening the three ball for number three in white. Well, absolutely. And Macy Mullins throughout this season has just been a great contributor for a young Lynchburg team, but we've seen that from all the freshmen and really just a point of emphasis here. There, when you have a team as youthful as Lynchburg has been, you have to have someone to step up. And Macy Mullins has been a player that's been willing to really come into this lineup and put her handprint on the offense and defense. Mullins, of course, a guard out of Gate City, Virginia, Gate City High School. Same alma mater as former Georgetown and Texas Tech standout guard Mac McClung. Now bouncing kind of back and forth between the G League and the active roster for the Lakers. Made a couple moves at the trade deadline. Lots of talent in Virginia across both high school and college level nowadays. Absolutely. Of course, Mac McClung, you know, pretty well known for his athleticism, dunking abilities. See if maybe Macy Mullins learned a couple of those moves from him in her time at Gate City. Be pretty cool to see 5'5 Macy Mullins lift off and dunk at home. At this point in the season, it's certainly welcome going into Odax. You'll take any points you can get. Kagi trying to make a good move, working against the baseline, but they'll see, uh, get her for the hook there. So that'll go down as a turnover for Randolph Macon. Now Lynchburg with that last offensive possession, the Macy Mullins three, that cuts it to 12. You can get it to 10 or less on this possession. Just got to make sure you get something quality. So it looks like the ball slips out of Casey Kelly's hands. Nimmo battling against three black uniforms, comes down with the offensive rebound, but couldn't get a very clean look at it. Casey Kelly a little slow to get up after that one. And still putting in the hustle, but just not enough there. That was a good closeout from Casey Kelly, but not quite enough to alter the shot from Morgan Miller. And there's another quick offensive trip for the Hornets. Very quickly, Randolph Macon pushes the lead to 15 with the ball. And these are the swings that Macon has really just been able to take advantage of all game. And even with Lynchburg, these last few matchups playing tougher teams like Roanoke and Randolph Macon near the top of the conference, common theme, they are really able to take over when it matters here in the second half, especially in this third quarter. Couple opportunities in close and we reset the largest lead of the game for Randolph Macon. Now at 17, here's a three from Vandergrift. Not afraid to shoot from deep. Definition of a three point specialist, but no good on that one. That was her first shot of the game. Haven't seen a ton of Ashley Vandergrift today. And now a crucial time in this game to really slow it down as we saw Hatfield. But Randolph Macon just doing a great job of passing the ball around. We've seen the high post a few times, but not a reason to go fast at this point in the ball game. Mullins a little long in that three along the left wing. It's another one and done trip here for Lynchburg. Got to be careful about stacking those up. Put a little bit of pressure at times defensively. Haven't been able to string together too many back-to-back -back defensive stops. That's going to be another Randolph making three first of the game for Haley Pascalone. And it's going to draw a timeout that will go full. Third quarter media timeout coming, 314 to go in the third period. We will take it with them and return in just a few moments on LHSN.
Yellow Jackets inside Turner Gymnasium right now. They've put up 18 points so far in the third quarter. Still three minutes to go. So a nice encore to the 23-point third quarter performance. It helped them to the win back in January, and it's thanks in large part to Katherine Kagey. She's got 16 to lead all scores. Had 16 points, nine rebounds, three assists last time out against Randolph. Another 16 the first meeting against Lynchburg. So a couple players stepping up today for, for Randolph-Macon. Got Sheridan Hatfield on double-double watch now, eight points, nine assists, but getting late in the season now with the ODAC Player of the Year conversation really starting to heat up. Some huge performances down the stretch here from Katherine Kagey. Absolutely, and we've seen multiple players in consideration for that award. Obviously, Maya Hamlet from Eastern Mennonite, if you remember a few games ago against Lynchburg, a career-high performance, but also looking at Lindsey Golden of Guilford, an extremely good shooter, Tyrese Green, who is second in scoring in the conference, and then Mary Schlusner of Washington and Lee averaging a double-double, as we've seen Katherine Kagey also extremely close to that. So talent all across the conference, and even for the players not mentioned, we've just seen great contributors for all ODAC teams. Yeah, and Schlusner's been great for Washington and Lee, who does still sit atop the ODAC standings. We'll get a Taylor Gant bucket here in close. Draws one of the louder ovations of the game today. Couple Lynchburg men's lacrosse players checking in for duty on the front row of the Lynchburg student section. Always trying to make a presence at these ball games. But the randolph making lead is 20. During that little mini feature story, Kagey puts in another bucket. Her total's up to 18. As Gant looking to make a break on that ball, forces steal, hits the deck, can't quite chase it down. Well, Sam, at this point in the season, too, you want to look to the leaders on the team to make an impact, and both Kagey and Hatfield doing just that today as Kagey adds to her total. Really, both offensively and defensively, all aspects of this game, they have been all over it. Yeah, not many players in the conference that can make a shot like that look so easy. Kagey going left to right, working underneath the basket. Nice finesse touch on the finish. 20 points for number 20. Another. Kayla Sledge fights through a little bit of contact there. No foul called. Tough time offensively today for Kayla Sledge. She's been held scoreless. Just two shots going up. And really in the second half, the mentality hasn't changed that much. It's just been poor execution from the Hornets at trying to get to the rack and not necessarily being as quick on offense with passing as we see Randolph Macon just making the cuts a little bit quicker, passing the ball around and getting these looks. And Randolph making working it around, finds another open corner three. It's going to go down for Ziegler. She has been quite the corner specialist in this one. That's at least the third look from what I can recall. Randolph making drawing up several looks from the corner. Lynchburg and Olivia Harris answer with a three-pointer of their own. And talking about Macy Mullins chasing that record, we've neglected to mention Olivia Harris currently holds it. Now clock running down, another one up and in. Ziegler back-to-back -back threes for Randolph Macon to close out a dominant third quarter that sees a 10-point lead quickly transform into 25. Yellow Jackets, a 72-47 advantage. Thanks in large part to Katherine Kagey and Marissa Ziegler.
Fourth quarter coming up here. LHSN. Just a few basketball broadcasts left in the season. We're guaranteed at least one more on the women's side. Men done on Turner Gymnasium for the season. Still looking to punch their way into postseason play in the ODAC tournament. Women, as we mentioned, top of the broadcast, battling it out with Ferrum. Try and host a first round contest. And Ferrum in that last matchup, not able to hang with Lynchburg and something that if you're the Hornets, whether it's home or away, you have to be able to just stick to that game plan in order to get to Salem for the rest of the tournament. Another empty trip for Lynchburg. That was a Kayla Terry three from the corner that won't drop. Now Kagi working against Spain Hour and her persistence will pay off. Sending her to the line where she's just 64% on the season. Of course, this is a Randolph-Macon team shooting a hair under 60%. Spot where they have struggled a bit on the floor. Not too many opportunities tonight either. Just one free throw also coming from Kagi. This will be the second and 0 for 2. Kagi just really looking comfortable with the ball today. And as she gets the ball down low, it's really, you have to think that it's almost too late in the possession if she can get the ball there and not afraid to hold on to it and make sure it goes through the hoop. So Kagi has her first free throw first for Randolph Macon. She'll take a breather over on the bench. Picked up those two early fouls that earned her trip to the sideline earlier in the first quarter, but since then she has been putting in the work for Randolph Macon as Macy Mullins looks to drive inside once again. Going to draw a foul, I believe, against Sheridan Hatfield. Correction, that's going to go against Juliana Park. Another fantastic evening for this Randolph-Macon squad. Got the offense going. A pair of triples early on. Stretch the field, rather the floor well. Three triples in the game and three rebounds, three assists to go along with her 15. And if you're Coach Nichols' squad here in this fourth quarter, I mean, you might not see a 15-point difference perhaps in that ODAC tournament, but you have to be able to fight back and... Looking at the squad right now, you just have to find a way or find someone on the court to bring that energy back. And off Macon, there's another cut. Looking to get the ball down low to Park. They're able to do so. Shots no good in close, but Park will earn a trip to the line. So a Randolph making team that struggled to get to the free throw line early on in the game, racking up a couple consecutive opportunities here. And surprising too, you know, speaking of Coach Nichols ahead of the game, it's not that she by any means said, oh, well, you know, we're gonna try, we're gonna try to foul them or anything like that, but it's certainly a team of any on Lynchburg's schedule that you don't mind sending to the free throw line a couple of times at least if it makes, makes it a little harder to come up with open floor jumpers. That's not quite been the case. Just five free throws going up for Macon. And Lynchburg just 11 fouls compared to Randolph Macon 16. And the defense has really been the difference. As we saw in that first half, the Hornets able to put up points and really execute the game plan. But defensively, a Macon squad that Normally it doesn't score as much as they did, but really just able to have their way and even the threes going down as we saw six in that first half. Mullins takes one top of the key, her third of the game. Very solid outing here for Macy Mullins. She's got 15 points to lead the Hornets. Three triples along with two rebounds. Going to be... Might be a little tough for her to tie that record here today unless she really heats up. But of course, 
Still got that regular season finale on senior day against Bridgewater. It's making able to go in close again. Juliana Park tacks on two more. She's up to 18 among three Yellow Jackets in double figures. You never know. I mean, about eight minutes to go here. As we touched on earlier, Mullins more than capable putting together five or six three-pointers in a game. Maddie Nimmo taking the shot there. And nodding Mullins up for the team lead with 15. With Mullins, we've just seen throughout the season, there's really no range that's safe if you're a defense. She's been able to really take advantage and just spreading that three-point scoring as well across the roster. You have to think, whether it's the next few games or even in the seasons to come, Lynchburg very certain in what they want to do and being able to use the arc and just continue to rely on that three-point shot. You think about that Averett game, that's a game where Brooke Kaysen really went off from deep as well. She had five, Mullins had six. It's a Lynchburg team that can shoot the three in bunches. They have left the old team record for three-pointers in a season in the rear view a long time ago, 193 on the season. And it's been Randolph Macon applying the pressure from deep here today. They've got 12. And the more contributors, the better for Lunchburg here in the next few games, especially just being able to have people coming off the bench and contributing. As we saw, Randolph Macon had foul trouble early on, but still able to find players on this roster who have really stepped up big, as even Juliana Park early on able to put her handprint on the game. We get Jane Elkins trip to the line. Haven't seen a ton of her, picked up some early fouls. Does have four points in the game, but Randolph Macon, again, as we're just talking about, the way they've shot it from deep, they've been content to be without some of their post presence today. And I mean, if you're the rest of the ODAC watching this game, you're, you're scouting Randolph Macon, might be shaking in your boots a little bit because you come in kind of with this mindset, kind of like you and I do of, you know, yeah, they have some ladies capable of shooting the three as Hatfield's gonna go coast to coast there. Finishes with the layup. That'll give her 10. Still needs one assist for the double-double. But you have this idea in your mind of a Randolph-Macon team that, you know, really stays patient. It doesn't put a whole lot of points on the board, really controls you defensively. And I mean, that that's, holds true today. I mean, that bucket from Casey Kelly gives Lynchburg 56, which is much better than the offensive output it had the first time these two teams met. But still, it, it's well within possibility for Randolph Macon to force another sub-60 performance here, though unlikely. And to your point, the turnover battle deadlock Sorry, it looks like Lunchburg has 11, Randolph making us 10, but when you see turnovers relatively equal, even just with the shooting percentage that Randolph making has put on today, it's really, it's a new stat every single game and they're just able to really get around the floor and be able to function this offense in many ways. So for the rest of the ODAC, there might not be one blueprint to beat this team, but you have to just continue and try to speed up the pace against them. As we've seen today, they've really just commanded the offensive side of the ball. Here's another foul going against Lynchburg. It's gonna result in a couple more free throws for Randolph Macon, who's done an excellent job getting to the line in this fourth quarter. Bit of a commentator's curse here, as we said, they only had one going into this fourth quarter. This is the most points Randolph Macon has scored in a game this season. Previous high was 73 coming not too long ago as the Yellow Jacket offense has picked up as of late. Came in that game against Averett, 13 point win. It's the only time they've scored over 70 besides this game. And I can't think of a better time of year to start firing on all cylinders. This offense, whether it's shooting or passing, has just been on another level today. Lynchburg still looking to create a little bit of momentum. 
for itself, maybe not in this game, but moving forward through the remainder of the season. Casey Kelly has not had much trouble driving to the basket, getting in close today. Had a little trouble picking up two once she's gotten down there, but that time able to come away with the bucket. And Casey Kelly really all game, as we see she has eight points now, but she's just been able to really fight down low. And this is a Randolph making team that certainly oversizes Lynchburg, but great battling down low. And if it's not in the stats, it's certainly mentally just trying to bite away at this Randolph making offense. Well, that will take us to our final media timeout of tonight's contest. Not much changing in the scoring department from when we entered this fourth and final period. 11-11 score in the fourth quarter, and that has Randolph making out to an 83-58 lead. We will step aside with them and get you back for the rest of the fourth quarter on LHSN. Randolph Macon exploding from three-point range here today. They've knocked in 12. Good for not only a season high, but the first time they've eclipsed the 10-point mark this season. Also out shooting Lynchburg, one of the hottest three-point shooting teams in the nation. Hornets knocking in just seven, still shooting at a pretty good clip. I mean, no coach is going to be super unhappy shooting 38% from deep. In fact, that's still six percentage points higher than what Lynchburg's averaging, but when your opponent is shooting it even better, got to pick things up a little bit defensively. And we've seen this a few times this season where maybe the three-point percentage is where it needs to be, but it's just the rest of the game that you really have to start working on. And especially for a smaller team like this, it might be difficult to fine-tune those things, but in order to be a, a higher competitor, and the ODAC standings, it really just takes time and sharpening those other sides of the game. So we'll get some more free throws here for Elkins. As those continue to pile up. Fouls catching up to Lynchburg a bit here in the fourth quarter. Elkins good on the first. Once again, for Lynchburg, it was just that third quarter that came a little short. And lots of ODAC teams that have really been able to pour it on in the second half. So if your coach Nickel is looking forward in these next few games that are extremely crucial in the season, you just have to find a way to come out of the break maybe a little bit more energized. Schedule doing no favors to Lynchburg down the stretch. But any coach will tell you once you get into the thick of conference play, there are really no games that you can afford to take lightly. And speaking of coming down the stretch here in ODAC play, take a quick peek at what's going on around the league. Here on Wednesday, February 15th, Virginia Wesleyan picked up a home win over Averett earlier today. Ferrum and Guilford, as you mentioned earlier, going at it right now. It tipped off at 7 p.m. Shenandoah out to a 17 point lead. Kind of clean up duty there. 58 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. They lead Eastern Mennonite on the road. Talking about that ODAC player of the year watch. Got Therese Green taking on Maya Hamlet. Couple of very capable scores. Looks like advantage going to Green in this one as her team's going to get the win. 
And as we've touched on for those players, even if it's not on the stat sheet, this is the time of year where you really have to be going at it for your game. And the teams who have the most experience, who have those leaders who will show up in prime time, definitely going to find success in the ODAC tournament. Despite a 27 point lead here, Haley Pascalone still a little frustrated at that backcourt violation. Another Randolph making turnover that, as you've noted, that stayed relatively close. A good job by Lynchburg, a team that struggles holding on to the ball. Just 11 turnovers, actually winning the turnover battle right now. So a win in that department. Here's a three from Vandergrift off the mark, just her second attempt of the game. And since about the middle of November, Vandergrift, since she's really seen her minutes increase, only one game that she has not made a triple in. That was Eastern Mennonite on the road a couple of weeks ago. It has not made one yet today, so we'll see over the final 248 if it will be a goose egg in the three points department from Vandergrift, who's among the ODAC's best in terms of three pointers made and percentage. Well, it's been a phenomenal transition for this program just in this last year as we've seen what Coach Nichols has been able to do with this recruiting class. But as you touch on, turnovers are a category that have been relatively difficult for Lynchburg to handle this season. And so, you know, lo looking at other competition in the ODAC, that's something that you can really try to key in on in the seasons to come as right now, Lynchburg averaging 20 a game, maybe a stat that they focus on this off season, but and this one doing a good job of controlling it. In the late going of this one, getting to see a few new fresh faces on both sides. Emmy and Byers in the game for Randolph Macon, as well as Kate Velez, Haley Felton, Lily Davis, Olivia Murray. It's getting some minutes here. Late game scenario. Some of the younger athletes on this Yellow Jacket team. See Jada Chambers get herself in close to the basket. Lynchburg staying aggressive offensively. Sammy Seaver looks like set to check in, get a little bit of game action. Be interesting to see if her role increases any, whether that be this weekend against Bridgewater or the ODAC tournament. Lynchburg has clinched its trip into the postseason. Just remains to be seen what seed they land at. Most likely, following this result, it's going to be the nine, which will mean a trip to Ferrum. Seaver will now check in for Jada Chambers. So she will join Taylor Gant, Mackenzie Brundage, Kayla Sledge, and Sarah Johnson, one of the few seniors for this program. Well, in regards to Seaver, too, it's really difficult coming off that injury as she's going to get the and one to go. Sammy Seaver picks up the late game bucket. By my recollection, that is the first points since December of last year for the junior guard who really, really got things going before going down to that injury last season, averaging over 14 points a game. Earns the M1 opportunity there, cashes in on it. She's got three points for the Hornets. And that one's got to feel good, too, just getting your mojo back a little bit. As we know, coming back from any injury can be difficult, but from that extended period of time just shows the dedication she's had to be back. Correction to the last point is the first points the Seaver has scored on her home floor this season. Did put up six on the road against Washington and Lee, played in the final eight minutes of that one. Another eight-minute spell against Virginia Wesleyan that saw her knock down a triple. First points back on Wayne Prophet Court for the junior. Randolph Macon with this win will improve to 14 and three in conference play. There's another turnover going against the Hornets. And really, for Coach Burke, it's just been an outstanding change after those first three losses for Macon. And, you know, early on in the season, very difficult to stay out of the long term. But what they've been able to do in coming back and just 
really playing their best basketball on the ODAC. It's definitely promising as the postseason arrives. Burke's been great this season, really been great her entire time at Randolph-Macon. Turks takes over a, a program with a very proud tradition. So three goes up from Taylor Gant, no good. Rebound initially controlled, then a jump ball called possession arrow pointing Lynchburg's way. But of course, Burke, we already mentioned 41 wins in her first three seasons. Of course, follows up the great Carol LaHaye who spent 38 years at the helm of the Yellow Jacket program, accumulated 647 wins her final season, seeing the Yellow Jackets not only win the ODAC championship, pull off an upset over Transylvania in the NCAA tournament and advance to the second round. And aside from Burke, Caitlin Creasel Bigler, assistant women's basketball coach for Randolph Macon, spent some time Earlier in her career with LSU, as Seaver will look to add a few more points here late in this one. She's got four now in the game, but look at that LSU program. They're coming off just their first loss of the season this past weekend to South Carolina. Things going very well down in Baton Rouge for that program. And same for this one here. You just touched on the tradition. Uh, both the men's and women's programs at Randolph-Macon, just what they've been able to do these last few years, it's been terrific to see, not only for the ODAC, but just for Division Three in general. Lynchburg, one last possession. Now Randolph-Macon crossing the half-court line. They will be able to dribble out the clock and ice a dominant offensive outing here on the road as they will take the win 87 to 65 over Lynchburg really just killing the Hornets from everywhere all around the floor inside outside even picks up a couple points at the free throw line there in the fourth quarter well they were just extremely persistent throughout this one as we saw at halftime relatively close game but just able to close it out whether it be through shooting through having tight defense but as the Yellow Jackets continue this run, it's going to be very scary for other teams in the ODAC come tournament time. Well, Lynchburg able to cross that 60-point threshold we thought might be key, but the defense still gives up 87. It's Randolph Macon goes off from beyond the arc. Catherine Kagey and co. leading the black and gold to a critical late-season road victory. That is going to do it. For all of us here at LHSN, I'd like to extend a special thank you to our directors, Tim LaDuca and Laura Porto, as well as the rest of our incredible LHSN staff. Once again, I am Sam Graham alongside Evan Gates. And with just one game left on the slate for this Lynchburg women's basketball team, we are signing off. <laughs>